What's up, I'm Vin, and today I want to derive the formula for a Maclaurin series. But first, before we jump into it, we should know that a power series is of this form here. And basically, a power series is just a series where now we have x's involved. But a Maclaurin series is a special type of power series that's centered at zero. And the main part of this proof here is to show that the coefficient a sub n is equal to the nth derivative at zero divided by n factorial. To derive the formula for a Maclaurin series, we're going to start with the power series formula from the previous page where we have the series from n equals 0 to infinity. And then we have a sub n, and we have x minus c to the n power. But remember, a Maclaurin series, we said, is centered at 0. So this is when, once again, c is equal to 0, which would give us this series here. So if we simplify this a little bit, this is now going to be the series from n equals 0 to infinity and we're going to have a sub n times x to the n. So the way that we derive this formula is we expand this series here, and we're going to have a sub 0 plus a sub 1 x to the first. And this is going to continue. We have a sub 2 x to the second, a sub 3 x to the third, and we have plus dot dot dot. This is going to go on forever. And we have a sub k x to the k, and we'll assume that k is bigger than 3. And this is an infinite series, so this will just go on forever. So what we have from here is that if we start taking derivatives of this, and notice I didn't use n because this series is defined in terms of n, so I felt like it would be sloppy to use n here since we're going on forever. So k is going to be the letter we're going to go with. But now we're just going to start taking derivatives. We have f prime of x. We're going to do the Powell rule because this is just an infinite polynomial. Now a not here or a sub 0 is a constant, so the derivative is just going to cancel out here and go to 0. But the derivative of a1x is just going to be a1. So we're going to have a1 plus, and we do the power rule on the next term, the 2 is going to come down. We have 2 times a sub 2 times x to the first, and then we'd have 3 times a sub 3 x to the 3 minus 1 is 2, and this would continue this pattern, and we have k times a sub k, x to the k minus 1. And this infinite series will continue. So one thing to note here is that we have a new leading constant, and we still have x to the first, x to the second, and so on. So in a weird way, we could do the Powell rule forever, and we're still going to have a constant plus some number times x plus some other number times x to the second forever and ever. But we're going to continue. We have the second derivative now. Now the derivative of a sub 1 is going to go to 0. And now this is going to give us the new leading term. So we're going to do the power rule again. We're going to have 2. And I'm actually going to write 2 times 1 times a sub 2. And the derivative of x is 1, so that's just gone after this. But then next we would have 3 times 2 times a sub 3 x to the first. And then this pattern would continue. And at the end here, we're going to have k times k minus 1 times a sub k x to the k minus 2 plus, and this will go on forever. So I'm going to do just a few more lines, and then it should be obvious here. So we have the third derivative now is the derivative of this leading term is going to cancel out. But now when we do the derivative of the second term here, we're going to have 3 times 2 times 1 times a sub 3 plus, and this will continue. And now the next derivative here is going to be k times k minus 1 times, now we do the power rule again, and k minus 2 is going to come down. We're going to multiply by all the stuff in front, and we have a sub k, now x to the k minus 3, and we go on forever. So I think now the pattern may be more obvious, but notice when we took the first derivative, the leading term was a sub 1. When we took the second derivative, we had 2 times 1 times a sub 2. When we took the third derivative, we had 3 times 2 times 1 times a sub 3. So it's helpful to note here that 2 times 1 is the same thing as 2 factorial. And if we simplify 3 times 2 times 1, that's going to give us 3 factorial. So the pattern here is that by the time we take the k derivative, we're going to have k factorial in front. We'll just make that a little bit neater. So we're going to have k factorial in front times just a sub k. That's our new constant term at the start of our series. And then we're going to have some coefficient, we'll call it b sub 1 of x to the first, 
will have some coefficient b sub 2 in front of x to the second, and so on and so forth, and this will continue forever. Now, just so you could follow the thought process here, if you note, see how the constant in front involved the a sub k term. So just know b1x is going to involve a sub k plus 1 and a whole bunch of other stuff times x to the first. Okay, it's just to write all that extra stuff after a sub k plus 1 would be very messy. So we just replace all that stuff in front of x with just b sub 1. Because what is important after this, this could continue forever, but now we're going to go ahead and derive the formula. So what we're going to do here is we're going to plug in x equals 0. And what that's going to accomplish here is the first term, k factorial times a sub k, is the only thing that's going to hang behind because we're going to have plus b1 times 0 plus b sub 2 times 0 squared plus, and then we're going to have a whole bunch of other 0 terms here. When we multiply by 0, everything's going to 0 out. So this tells us the k derivative at 0 is just going to be equal to k factorial times a sub k because all of these terms after the first are going to cancel and go to 0. So now we're going to solve for the coefficient a sub k. We're just going to divide by k factorial. And now we have enough to close this out. So a sub k is equal to the k derivative at 0 over k factorial. So if we look at our original series here, our power series, our power series simplified was the series from n equals two, uh, from n equals zero to infinity of, and we had a sub n times x to the n power. But now we solved for the coefficient a sub n. We have an explicit formula for it, and the explicit formula that we found. Maybe I could simplify this a little bit more over here. A sub k was equal to the k derivative at zero over k factorial. So then what we're going to do is, and we'll just make that a little neater, so k derivative at 0 over k factorial. So we're going to replace a sub n. a sub n by this equation here is going to be the nth derivative at 0 over n factorial. And this is times x to the n power. And this is our exact formula that we had on the previous page for our McLaurin series. So this is how we derive the formula for the McLaurin series. We just keep taking derivatives of the original power series looking for the pattern. And that allows us, after we plug in 0, to solve for the coefficients. OK, well, this is going to conclude this video on deriving the formula for the McLaurin series. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, just leave the topics you want me to cover in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.